Okay, so let's get started. So I don't know if you can kind of read, the font's a little small here, um, but I'll try to, try to talk you through it. But the idea is that if you guys are familiar with sort of the three pillars of design innovation, this comes in a lot of different flavors, but the idea is like, you know, really it's feasibility, viability, and desirability. Okay, really those are things in mind. If your product has all those two th type of things, usually that's, you're very, very successful. Usually the counter contrapositive is also sort of usually uh, true as well. So the truism there. So the idea is like, you know, say you have a great product that, has, you know, you could build it, it's very feasible, but you know, it's very viable, but then there's no desirability <laughs> for some reason and it fails, right? So you look at it in one way of describing to you how to be successful in the same way as you can also use this diagram to help you debug. Maybe for that project you really thought was gonna do well, didn't do so hot, okay? So that's one of the pillars of design thinking is, is, is this pillars of design innovation diagram here. Okay, so another thing we wanna talk about here. So the reason I'm coming here and talking about today is basically I'm gonna to try to give you, I think I've used this before that I don't expect as small uh, startups that you guys will want, you're gonna be successful by doing exactly what SAB does, but I'll try to give you guys some patterns and stuff like that that have been successful with us that you guys can take home, take it into your house, make it homegrown and modify it and then be successful. So this is really kind of guidelines. So I could talk a little bit for hours about how SAP has a pill process and, and an I2M an process about how we basically develop ideas, but really when it boils down to, it's very much like this diagram what we're doing today. We, it's changed over a little bit, but right now, this is the way that SAP is gonna build their next generation of apps. We, we, you can't really see the colors too well, but the idea is, there, there is there's two graphs, and one starts started to decline here, and one that's on the upslope here, and there's sort of, sort of a, a point here that we switch over, so uh, this is quite a common diagram mathematics, but the idea here is, this is the side that we call design size. So this color here, imagine this to be the design thinking. In here, we're doing radical change. We are very, very hooked into the customer. We'll do a lot of invitations. We'll do uh, cheap prototypes. We have things like say fail, often fail cheaply. And then we'll come to a point and then we'll move over into our sort of a build type of process. And I'll go into that a little more. But I just kind of wanted to show you sort of a diagram of that so you have a visual understanding. So time's along this axis here. Effort or ramp up is along this axis here. And so what we'll do is we'll eventually move, migrate from the design side into the build side. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm talking about here. So in the design phase, so this is actually design thinking, uh, break up of the stages of design thinking, so actually interconnections between that point. We'll talk a little bit about that when we go in that presentation, but the idea is here, we employ design thinking. That's our mechanism of putting well, getting from like ideas into portfolios or ideas into planning, so on and so on. We heavily, heavily interact with the customer at this point. We try to use thing, tools like emphasizing with the customer, we'll ideate, prototype, all those things, but really we're focused on user input. That's the number one thing that drives this particular process. We look for radical ideas. We're not very scared off about changing things and, 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 and we're not really, we're very, dynamic, I, don't, I was about to use the word agile, but that has certain connotations these days, right? And we love this mantra, we love fail, fail cheaply, fail often, because that's how you get to success, okay? Okay, so hopefully everybody understands that. Maybe not fully understand how radical we wanna be in this phase, but the idea is maybe you can get the just, just we're gonna kinda just oppose or basically contrast to the build phase. Okay, so we're still a sort of bricks and mortar company. We still have to ship software, we, and we want it to be of all those things that make SAP famous, you know, sturdy type of software that's very dependable and all those other things. Enterprise grade is what we kind of call it. But the idea is how do we have that roadmap, timelines, all those type of things? Because the first one we talked about, Wayne, was very agile, it was very, you know, loosey goosey, if you could use that phrase. How do we actually get product to customers and the timelines that they, we want? And, to basically fulfill the promises and expectations that we set with the customer. So we have this build phase. So now we talked a little bit, of, I think the agile scrum methodology got talked a little bit about our testing phase, but in our testing uh, presentation, the idea is we leverage lean scrum as a development uh, methodology at SAP. SAP is not a hugely radical company, it, so when we're doing it, everybody should be doing it now. It's not so much a forefront. Uh, it was a little bit of a novelty, I would say maybe maybe earlier on, but now I think it's pretty well a standard. So I'm not gonna talk too much about that. Uh, we leverage things like usability testing, user testing. Uh, we'll kind of use the terminology uh, interchangeably. At this point, we start to change the way we do it. So what we do is we kind of have a product owner who's sort of like the surrogate user and they drive the process. They isolate the development team sometimes a little bit from the, develop, from the user, but we, that isolation exists 
in the collection of, say, user stories or something like that, but that isolation doesn't exist, we would still do that from usability testing. So we're still pushing stuff out there and getting feedback, but we do it in a different sort of way. And we'll definitely get into talking about that. However, when we're talking about before about that radical change, and here what we want to do is, especially if we're near the end of the delivery date, we'll, we're focusing on tweaking or omitting something as opposed to radically redesigning something. Uh, we focus on shipping products. So that's a mantra within the Agile Manifesto is having shippable product. So that's why we like that particular paradigm as well. And then lastly, we try to, if it's the first version or something like that, we try to create, uh, include things like so, you know, optimize for minimal viable product, right? right? Because we, have to, we want to ship something. I think, uh, was it General Patton that said, it's like, a good plan implemented today is better than a perfect plan implemented tomorrow. So that's sort of in that, that way. OK, so that's the quick, quick and dirty one. If you guys are OK, and we'll jump right into the first presentation.